as we address what is transpiring with the dangerous Middle East respiratory virus, MERS. The latest case, an American case of MERS, diagnosed uh, in Sunday at the Dr. Phillips Hospital in Orlando. The 44-year-old patient works at a hospital in Saudi Arabia. He left Saudi Arabia April 30th, flew to London, then made connections in Boston and Atlanta before landing at Orlando International Airport on the first day of May to visit family. The man started feeling ill when he landed in London, describing his symptoms as muscle aches. Now MERS first surfaced in Saudi Arabia in the spring of 2012. In two years, 538 cases have been confirmed in 17 countries, and of those, 140 people have died. Here are some facts about the virus. It's a coronavirus, meaning it acts like a cold and attacks the respiratory system. Second, researchers don't exactly know how MERS spreads. Doctors are speculating that it's transmitted through respiratory droplets. Third, camels, not the cigarettes, the animal, Camels appear to be a link in the MERS chain, and nearly three-quarter of camels in Saudi Arabia tested positive for past MERS exposure. Fourth, it may have a seasonal pattern. A surge in cases was seen this spring and last spring. Fifth, and finally, there are no treatments, no vaccine. Joining us to talk about MERS, Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate. So, Nick, we have a case here in Orlando. But this guy, as we chronicled his flight itinerary, he literally was a globetrotter. Should that cause concern in those other places? Absolutely. We live in a global village, and these opportunistic infections do travel just like world travelers. They hitch a ride on a host like this guy who was a health worker in Saudi Arabia, ended up in Orlando, but stopped in Boston, London, and Atlanta before he got here. Now, the, th the thing is, there's a good news piece of the story, and that is that public health officials and the surveillance system worked. They tracked this guy in an earlier case in, in Indiana. They isolated him. They kept him from exposing this virus to too many people. But what if he'd have gone to Disney World when he was in Orlando, mm. you know, or he'd gone to Universal or one of the theme parks? We'd be looking at a much different picture today, and that's really the concern. As it stands right now, I believe they've alerted everyone who's been a part of a flight and they've tried to isolate the health care workers who have dealt with this guy. But, but you think about flying especially, and if this is respiratory droplets and the, uh, the cabin atmosphere, the pressurized cabin, conceivably everybody on that plane could have been exposed. Absolutely, and that's why uh, CDC and other officials are looking at about 500 people that were in close proximity to this guy. Now the good news is that it's not easily spread. It's not as easily spread as the flu. It's not as easily spread as measles. The bad news is it's more lethal than those infections. One in three people who are infected die compared to SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, which killed about 800 people uh, 10 years ago before they got it under control. That killed about one in 10 of people that were affected, but this MERS can kill as many as one in three who are infected. And as you say, there's no treatment, there's no cure, there's no vaccine, so there's no reason to panic yet, but the concern is if this virus gets out of control and really does spread globally, we could have a huge public health problem on our hands. Well, guys, we just handed an update here from our producers and the World Health Organization talking about this today. And coming from the, a meeting on MERS specifically, the World Health Organization says this is uh, not, not a public health emergency of international concern despite a spike in cases recently. That according to the World Health Organization. They also went on to talk about other things like polio, mm -hmm. which are more of a concern here. So Nick, let me ask you, why has MERS captivated our attention? Because it's talked about a lot. It's new, it's hugely lethal, and it, and it does, as I say, kill a large number of people that it infects. But uh, the World Health Organization is right. It's not a reason to panic yet, but that is the concern that it could become a disease that mutates and evolves. It could be a virus that becomes more easily transmittable. And as it spreads, of course, the infection rates grow. But at this point, the World Health Organization and other public health officials are getting people to focus on the really big killers. And there has been a resurgence in, in diseases like polio. Measles is a recent outbreak. And, and we think that some of those diseases that were once vanquished, we live in the modern age of modern medicine, how are we still at risk from these bugs? We are, from older ones that are coming back and newer ones like MERS that did not appear until 2012. We'll get to measles in just a second. One other note about MERS, it's, it's interesting when we talk about flight security and monitoring and scrutinizing uh, would-be passengers on planes. In Lebanon, 
they're talking about taking precautions, installing a body heat detector to identify passengers possibly carrying the MERS virus. Do you think that in terms of dealing with this, that's something we could see in our airports here? It's possible. I mean, they, they really can't get a good handle on how to keep these things from spreading. And what's happened over time is that ventilation in airlines and aircraft have gone down to save money, and so you are more likely to contract something if you're on a plane. I mean, the advice here, of course, is wash your hands, don't touch your face. If you're sitting next to somebody who's coughing, get away from that person. You know, if you're on a plane, don't worry about offending someone who's, who's obviously sick to keep yourself from getting sick. And if you're, if you're ill yourself, don't get on a plane. Stay home, forgo that business trip, particularly to Saudi Arabia if you can, to try to contain it so we can head off those kinds of severe uh, surveillance procedures in, in airports. Well, the same article uh, if you know, from the World Health Organization also mentioned the 145 people that have killed most of them dying in the Middle East. Here we had that case in Indiana, the case in Florida as well. Um, is it because there's better medical care and better detection of diseases like this that we shouldn't expect to see 145 people die in this country? Well, at this point, we don't know. I mean, it's too, I think it's too early to say that we're safer here because the medicine here is better. Uh, we don't know, uh, you know exactly how lethal it would be if it got to a larger population in the U.S. The truth is that there are more people that were infected in Saudi Arabia, and that's why so many of them died there. It wasn't because the medical care was substandard. I should also point out that a lot of the folks who did die had underlying conditions, uh, diabetes, heart conditions, and other problems that may have made them more susceptible. So it's really a luck, a, a, the roll of the dice, whether you, whether you get this condition, where you get it, and what kind of treatment you get. But at this point, I don't think any of us should feel like we're safer here because the healthcare is better. We're gonna tr uh, transition here from MERS to measles. You touched on it a second ago. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found 129 cases of measles from New Year's Day to April 18th. That is the highest number of new cases since 1996, but there's been a new outbreak in Ohio uh, that has infected 68 people, adding to what's already an 18-year high. California, another state reporting a high number of measles cases. Both states said its outbreak resulted from people visiting the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, does that sound plausible? It does. The Philippines is having a dramatic outbreak in measles. Uh, people are not vaccinated in the Philippines in the way that they are here typically. And virtually all the people that were affected were unvaccinated folks here. The group in Ohio was were a, a group of Amish folks that were there on a, on a, a, a mission. Uh, they, they got infected. They brought measles back and infected other people that were, that were not vaccinated. The California outbreak was also unvaccinated adults. The bigger trend line here is that there's been a movement and some questioning about whether or not vaccination against measles and other conditions poses side effects and other problems. And as more parents are not vaccinating their kids, we're seeing the spike in measles, which many doctors until recently had never seen a case of because it was so rare. In fact, the measles, I think was, measles was declared eradicated in this country in 2000, unofficially, the year 2000, but it's coming back, particularly among folks who are not vaccinated. Obviously, the Amish are not vaccinated. They're, these cases are often being acquired in other places. They're imported cases, but when you bring them back to a vulnerable population in the U.S., like the Amish community or a college uh, 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 in, in uh, California, it can be a problem. And anybody with small kids, too, knows if you go to your pediatrician, a lot of them nowadays will not accept you as a patient unless you are willing to vaccinate your kids. Uh, some pediatricians, based on these recent occurrences of measles and things like that, are taking a very firm stance on that issue of vaccinations. And I know our pediatrician said specifically, look, get your kid vaccinated mm -hmm. or don't come back to the practice. Mm -hmm. The risk of being infected, the science shows, uh, is, is far greater than the risks that are posed by the side effects. I mean, measles is a killer. I mean, there, there, are, there are kids who die around the world from measles infection. It's, it's, it's a serious thing to take seriously. Another disease thought to be eradicated, you touched on earlier, polio. Mm -hmm. are, are we seeing an outbreak of polio again in the United States or is this elsewhere? It's mostly elsewhere at this point. There are some isolated cases here, but it's mostly in places like India. Uh, and, and Asia where, uh, and, and Africa, where a, po a polio vaccine is not as widespread. You know, I remember in the mid-90s, CDC was predicting that polio would be eradicated from the world like smallpox. Mm -hmm. 
within a decade, and that has not proven true. It's been uh, surging. Again, some of those issues have to deal with cultural issues. Some of them have to deal with belief systems. Some of them have to deal with fear of medicine and, frankly, fear of Western medicine in those places, and that's why polio is, is resurging in places around the world. It's not a major issue here. It does happen here, but it's not as frequent and not as common. Well, global conflict is also playing a role. I recently read an article about Syria and the, the reoccurrence of diseases there when kids were normally getting vaccinated at an early age. They're not getting those vaccinations because of the ongoing civil war, and that's also contributed, and if not a small way, a significant way uh, to the uh, reoccurrence of these diseases. No question. I mean, the, 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 the attempt by the U.S. to have a foothold in some of these places is complicated by politics, geopolitics, sure. by, you know, fears of the West and, and American policies, and they, they certainly don't make it easier. There's no question about it. There are good works that are happening. I mean, there are efforts underway around the world to try to target these diseases, and, you know, the only thing we can hope is that they'll be more successful in the years to come. You mentioned the P word, politics. There's another political health story that had people scratching their heads this week. North Carolina businessman Chris, uh, Keith Crisco died at his home Monday. He was in a runoff with American Idol finalist Clay Aiken for a North Carolina congressional seat on the Democrat side. His campaign said he suffered injuries from a fall and died by the time emergency workers arrived. Keith Crisco was 71. So in terms of hazards in the home, and we joke about the commercials, I've fallen and I can't get up, but falls can prove fatal. Is there an age line somewhere demographically where people need to be more conscious of balance issues in the home? About the time that you qualify for Medicare, which is age 65, that's when fall risks increase, and it is true. You break a hip, you break something serious, it's harder for older people to recover, particularly if they have a chronic condition. You get into a hospital, you suffer a secondary infection. It's, it's really a very big case. We don't hear much about it. We hear about cancer, we hear about heart disease, we hear about diabetes, but falls in the home are a leading cause of, at least a secondary cause of death among seniors. So, you know, it's really important to make sure that if you're having balance issues, if you're falling, you get it checked out. Is there a neuro neurological condition? Do you need to do something in your home to be safer? It, it's, it's not, and maybe this case will bring more attention to it, but it's not an insignificant matter, no question. Nick Tate, we appreciate your perspective on all matters medical and a few political, not to mention geopolitical. Coming back, more geopolitical news about those kidnapped Nigerian schoolgirls. Please stay with us. There's more to come on America's Forum here on Newsmax TV.